जय हिंद स्टूडेंट्स सो दिस इज माई सेकेंड वीडियो ऑफ सेटेलाइट कम्युनिकेशन ऑन कॉम्प्लेक्स टॉपिक्स द सब्जेक्ट कोड इज के सी जीरो सिक्स टू विच इज बेस्ड ऑन द ए के टी सिलेबस एंड टूडे आई एम गोइंग टू कवर द टॉपिक ऑफ सेकेंड यूनिट विच इज ऑर्बिटल मैकेनिक्स सो लेट स्टार्ट विद ऑर्बिटल मैकेनिक्स बिफोर गोइंग मूव अहेड वी शुड नो दैट सेटेलाइट रिवॉल्व अराउंड द अर्थ which is similar to like earth revolves around the sun so the principle which are applied to earth and its movement around sun are also applicable to satellite and its movement around earth so many scientists have given you know different sort of theories um, from different times but jonas kepler who was a german astronomer and scientist has given three basic laws which are known as kepler's law and which was one of the most accepted scientists describing in principle of satellite that moves around earth kepler's formulated three laws three laws that changed the whole satellite communication theory and observation these are popularly known as kepler's law of planetary motion and which are very helpful to visualize the motion of satellite through space now we will study about the kepler's law of planetary motion as i already state that jonas kepler was a german astronomer and mathematician of late 16th century and early 17th century according to him there are three laws नहीं लेजर पॉइंटर ऑन नहीं है ये जो मेरी वीडियो है ना ये मैंने पहले उसके उससे बनाई थी माइक्रोसॉफ्ट 360 से फिर उसी की मैंने पीपीटी ली तो मुझे लगता है उसकी रिकॉर्डिंग वाला लेजर पॉइंटर दिखाता है ये एक दो पीपीटी में दिखेगा ये दिखता है मैं क्लास में भी चलाती हूँ ना तो लेजर पॉइंटर दिखता है ये कोई इशू नहीं आपने कहाँ रोका था अच्छा ओके तो ये फिर मैं ये हटा दू Let's start with the Kepler's law of planetary motion. So, as I told you earlier, that Jonas Kepler was a German astronomer and a very famous scientist and mathematician of late 16th and early 17th centuries. Basically, he has governed three laws of planetary motion, which are sometimes called as Kepler's first law, Kepler's second law, and Kepler's third law. Kepler's first law is also known as law of orbit. Kepler's second law is also known as law of areas. Kepler's third law is also known as law of time period. So we will discuss all the different three different laws one by one. So first law is Kepler's first law which is law of orbit. first i am going to tell the statement of this kepler's law and then i'll explain what is it according to kepler's first law it states that the path followed by a satellite around its primary will be an ellipse and for satellite for artificial satellite the primary uh, will be the earth this ellipse has two focal points or the foci f1 and f2 which is shown in figure center of mass of the earth will always present at one of the two foci of ellipse so if a satellite is revolving around earth in an elliptical orbit okay so any smaller body which is revolving around around a heavy body will always form an elliptical orbit with your higher body or the heavy body will be at one focal point of that ellipse in this satellite communication theorem here we can see that this ellipse has two foci one is f1 and second is f2 and this is the center of the ellipse so your earth will be located either at f1 or at f2 any one foci of this ellipse let's say our earth is located at this point and our satellite will be revolving around earth in this elliptical orbit 
we all know that ellipse has two sort of uh, axis one is one is major axis and another one is minor axis so this is the major axis and this is the minor axis this major axis if we divide in half is known as semi major axis which is represented as a small a so a small a is semi major axis i have also shown a small b here which is nothing but the semi minor axis correct so semi major axis plays a very important role in satellite communication which we will be studying in coming slides if the distance from the center of the object to the point in elliptical path is considered then the farthest point of an ellipse from the center is called apogee so in a elliptical orbit like this if your earth is at one foci here and your satellite is here so satellite will be crossing at this point it will be crossing at this point also right so if your this is earth and this is satellite when your uh, when your satellite is at this point which is the closest to the surface of earth this point is known as perigee perigee point so perigee is the point when the distance between the satellite from the center of or from the surface of earth is smallest at one instant once a satellite is revolving around the earth it can come at this point also at this point when you can see that the distance is the farthest one then this point is known as apogee right so this point is apogee this point is perigee we all know that if we talk about ellipse there will be a centricity which defines the ellipse for this ellipse a centricity small e is equals to under root of a square minus b square upon a where a is a semi major axis and b is a semi minor axis for a circular orbit the centricity will be zero if we talk about a circular orbit then the centricity will be zero so students from this figure you can see that this is semi major axis represented as a small a this is semi minor axis represented as a small b here this is our earth and this is the satellite so the closest distance between the earth and the satellite will be known as perigee and the farthest distance between the satellite and earth will be the apogee now moving on to uh, the kepler second law as i told you that kepler second law is also known as law of areas law of areas means we in this particular law we will talk about the area covered by the satellite so as per kepler second law it states that for equal interval of time delta t the area covered by satellite will be same with respect to the mass of the earth this can be understood by taking a look on the following figure here this is earth and this is the area covered by satellite for a time gap of delta t here also the time gap is delta t then the area swept by this satellite will be same okay assume that satellite covers p1 and p2 distances in the same time interval then the areas b1 and b2 will be same so here also we can see kepler second law the area will be same if the time interval is same okay a1 equals to a2 if the time gap uh, delta t is same okay now moving on to the kepler's third law this is very important law and generally in your subject it can be asked Uh, in terms of a statement it can be asked in terms of a derivation sometimes 
the derivation of this Kepler's third law uh, is also very important. Okay. So, please understand this very carefully. As per Kepler's third law, it is states that the square of the periodic time of an elliptical orbit is proportional to the cube of semi major axis. So, if we say that capital T is the time period or the orbital period, orbital period means in the time when your satellite will cover the complete orbit. So, that is known as orbital period. A small a, if we talk about elliptical orbit, this is small a will be the semi major axis. If we talk about the circular orbit, then this a small a will be orbital radius. So, I will represent this here. Here, this is earth and this is satellite. And this is the, this is the distance a. So, if we have a circular orbit, then this is small a will be the orbital radius. Orbital radius means there is a difference between orbital radius and altitude. Orbital radius means the distance from the center of earth to the satellite. Altitude means the height of satellite. Altitude means the distance of satellite from the surface of earth. So, here if a circular orbit is there, then A will be the orbital radius means the distance of satellite from the center of earth. Similarly, if the orbit is elliptical, then this small a will be the semi major axis, right. So, if we remove this proportionality from this point, t square will be equal to 4 pi square a cube upon mu, where a new constant is added here, which is also known as Kepler's constant. As we all know that there is a fixed value of this, um, you know, uh, time period for a geostationary satellite, the Kepler's constant value is, the Kepler's constant value is 3.986 into 10 to the power 5 kilometer cube per second square, okay. This is fixed. Okay, this is fixed. So, in the coming slide, we will see the derivation of this. Okay, so if we go for the derivation of this, we will study how this equation can come t square is proportional to a cube. So, we all know that there are two forces which are acting on satellite. Let us say uh, this is earth and here your satellite is revolving around earth. So, there will be two forces, one force is inward force, one force is outward force. Inward force and outward force. So, to make a satellite revolve around earth at a constant speed and it should not fall uh, within the uh, uh, earth and outside the earth, we have to keep these two forces same. So, one is centripetal force and another will is centrifugal force, okay. Two forces are acting on this. So, for satellite, these two forces must be equal. Centripetal force is nothing but uh, it is G M E M by R square, where G is the universal gravitational constant, M E is the mass of earth, a small m is the mass of satellite, capital R is the distance of satellite from the center of earth. So, this is F1 force which is centripetal force and then that force is F2 force which is, which is centrifugal force. Centrifugal force means mv square by r where v is the velocity of satellite. So, we have to keep these two forces same. So, F1 should be equal to F2. Once we keep F1 equals to F2, then we get V equals to G M E G M E by R. And if we remove this, uh, we all know that G M E can be removed, removed by mu. Mu equals to G into M E. So, because G is constant, M E is constant, G means universal gravitational constant, which, which is a constant. M is the mass of earth which is also constant. 
सो मल्टीप्लीकेशन ऑफ दिस टर्म विल ऑल्सो बी अ कॉन्स्टेंट विच इज नोन एज म्यू और द कैपलर कॉन्स्टेंट फाइन सो वी म्यू इक्वल्स टू जी एम ई हैंड्स वी इक्वल्स टू अंडर रूड ऑफ म्यू बाय आर दिस रिप्रेजेंटेशन इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट यू कैन सी मैनी न्यूमेरिकल्स इन योर क्वेश्चन पेपर बेस्ड ऑन दिस फॉर्मुला सी दैपलर थर्ड लॉ इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट फॉर योर डेरिवेशन फॉर न्यूमेरिकल्स ऑर्बिटल इक्वेशन ओके सो दिस डेरिवेशन यू हैव टू अंडरस्टैंड वेरी केयरफुली ओके सो दिस वी हैव ऑलरेडी डन नाउ कमिंग टू द नेक्स्ट टॉपिक विच इज द ऑर्बिटल एलिमेंट सो वाई वॉट वॉट इज द नीड ऑफ यू नो टू अंडरस्टैंड दीज ऑर्बिटल एलिमेंट द नीड इज एज वी नो दैट वी हैव टू लोकेट द सेटेलाइट इन स्पेस राइट you can launch a satellite but to have a communication between earth and satellite you have to see where the satellite is so you have to track the satellite you have to find the location of satellite so to locate a satellite we should know about all these six orbital elements right based on this you can uh, you can check the exact position or the location of satellite so there are six orbital elements the first is semi major axis small a second is eccentricity small e mean anomaly capital m argument of perigee omega inclination i right ascension of ascending node which is known as ohm so these are the six orbital elements which we have to understand and these six orbital elements define the orbit of earth satellite therefore it is easy to discriminate one satellite from another based on the values of orbital elements okay so here we can see that i have used three coordinates here x i y i and z i to understand the concept of um, these orbital elements you should know what these reference points are so x i is the direction of first point of aries first point of aries what is this first point of aries first point of aries means if we calculate the distance from center of earth to center of sun if if i draw a line which is joining the center of earth to the center of sun fine in this direction when at the vernal equinox vernal equinox means on 21st of march so if i if i draw a line between the center of earth to center of sun on 21st of march then that direction is known as first point of aries which is my reference as xi yi is another axis which is perpendicular to this xi in equatorial plane and zi is perpendicular to these two axes here my satellite point is this and this is the perigee point and this is the ascending node what is ascending node ascending node is actually the intersection of equatorial plane earth's equatorial plane and the inclination plane so the point of intersection is known as ascending node and if we are going from south to north fine this is known as ascending node okay so we all know about the semi major axis we all know about the eccentricity already so i will not uh, repeat these two uh, orbital elements this we have already discussed mean anomaly okay mean anomaly is the next point that i am going to cover or the next orbital element see our earth is here satellite is here okay and this is the perigee point right so let's say if at perigee the time is t and the present time is small t where the satellite at present is located okay and mu is the velocity then mean anomaly gives the average value of angular position of satellite with reference to perigee how m is equals to mu into 
टी माइनस टी पी इट इज मेजर्ड इन रेडियंस ओके इट इज एक्चुअली आर्क ओके सो ड्यूरिंग फुल एक्लिप्स सेटेलाइट रिसीव नो पावर फ्रॉम द सोलर एरे एंड ऑपरेट एंटायरली फ्रॉम इट्स बैटरीज द लेंथ ऑफ एक्लिप्स पीरियड विल वेरी फ्रॉम फ्यू मिनिट्स एंड टू ओवर एन आवर फॉर अ सेटेलाइट द पॉइंट विच इज क्लोजेस्ट फ्रॉम द अर्थ इज नोन एज पेरेगी राइट वी ऑलरेडी नो दैट पेरेगी इज अ पॉइंट वेन द सेटेलाइट इज क्लोजेस्ट टू अर्थ so mean anomaly m gives the average value of angular position of satellite with reference to perigee means this point this arc this arc is known as mean anomaly if your orbit is circular the mean anomaly give the angular position of the satellite in orbit but if orbit is elliptical then the calculation of exact position is very difficult okay so at that time mean anomaly is used as an intermediate step next is argument of perigee okay satellite orbit cut the equatorial plane at two points right as i told you here you can see that uh, this is the satellite orbit okay and this is the orbital plane let's say this is the equatorial plane so grayish is the equatorial plane and this tilted one is the orbital plane so you can see that this actual satellite orbit is cutting this equatorial plane at two points so as i told you that uh, this point is known as ascending node once you are going from north to south uh, south to north once you are going from north to south this is this point is known as descending node and the line joining descending node and ascending node is, is known as the line of nodes correct now coming to this so what is this argument of perigee the satellite orbit cut the equatorial plane at two points first point is called descending node second point is called as ascending node i told already you now the argument of perigee is the angle between the ascending node and the perigee if both perigee and ascending node are existing in the same point then the argument of perigee will be zero degrees so argument of perigee is the angle between the ascending node and the perigee okay it is the angle between the ascending node and the perigee okay so ascending node and perigee so this this omega is known as argument of perigee correct which is the angle between the ascending node and the perigee correct so this is known as argument of perigee next we have the inclination inclination is small i so inclination as i told you there is one equatorial plane and there is one inclined plane in which your satellite is located generally uh, your geostationary satellite lies in the equatorial plane and the orbit is circular but other than geostationary satellites they have some inclination so what this inclination is it means your satellite is not exactly in the equatorial plane see this is the equatorial plane and this is some your satellite orbit so there will be some angle between the equatorial plane and the satellite actual plane so that angle is known as the inclination angle the angle between the orbital plane and the earth's equatorial plane is known as inclination so here we can see that this grayish area is the inclination and this white is the normal orbital plane okay uh, this grayish area is the equatorial plane and white area is the orbital plane and the angle between the equatorial and the actual so uh, satellite orbit plane is known as the equatorial uh, inclination angle it is measured that the ascending node uh with direction being east to north okay so i will show you like this this is uh, let's say this is earth okay and uh, this is satellite orbit satellite is moving from this direction to this direction this is earth so here you can see student there is one point here and one point here there are two point of intersection this is ascending node and this is descending node 
okay so angle inclination angle means angle between this and this this is inclination angle and we calculate this inclination angle at ascending node this is fixed provided the direction will be from east to north obviously obviously ascending node and uh, equatorial angle it can be this also right so we will not count this what angle we will count from east to north okay so the inclination defines the orientation of the orbit by considering the equator of uh, earth as reference uh, uh, students this is the basic reference of type of orbit here i have mentioned so there are uh, generally few uh, four type of orbit first is equatorial orbit polar orbit prograde orbit and retrograde orbit equatorial orbit is the angle of inclination is either 0 degrees or 180 degrees i mean uh, your uh, inclination will be zero in case of equatorial plane polar orbit is the angle of inclination is 90 degree uh, so if we see like this okay uh, this is uh, equator so for uh, for equatorial orbit it will be parallel to the equator so inclination will be zero polar orbit means this is north pole this is south pole so your orbit will be like this in polar orbit the angle of inclination is 90 degree right in prograde orbit the angle of inclination lie between 0 and 90 degree okay in retrograde orbit the angle of inclination lie between 90 and 180 degree okay so these are the type of orbit based on the angle of inclination with respect to angle of inclination these are the four type of orbits uh, this is the last uh, 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 orbital element which is right ascension of ascending node okay so we all know the ascending node we all know what is ascending node what is descending node what we know ascending node is the point where the satellite crosses the equatorial plane while going from southern hemisphere to the northern hemisphere what is southern hemisphere and northern hemisphere here we have earth so if we divide this earth in two part with respect uh, respect to the equator the above point this point this is north pole and this is south pole so from equator to north this is known as northern hemisphere and and from equator to south this is known as southern hemisphere right okay so we all know the ascending node ascending node means the cut or the point of intersection of equatorial plane and the satellite orbit is known as the ascending node and while your satellite is going from south to north right ascension of ascending node which is ohm is the angle between the line of areas and the ascending point towards east direction in the equatorial plane areas is also called as vernal and equinox so point to remember here is that this ascending node or right ascension of ascending node is the angle between the first point of Aries and the descend ascending node. So for this I will take you to this slide. Okay. Here you can see this is the ascending node and this is the first point of Aries direction. So angle between first point of Aries and the ascending node and while going from this direction okay or you can say while we are going from uh, east to north right so this angle ohm is known as right ascension of ascending node now the satellite ground track is the path of the surface of earth which lies exactly below the orbit 
the ground take of satellite can take a number of different forms depending on the values of orbital elements so students uh, this is all about the orbital elements that we have discussed today and as we already discussed that these orbital elements are used to define the exact location of satellite and also to differentiate one satellite from another satellite there are thousand numbers or you know a uh, big number of satellites which have already launched so to differentiate one satellite from another or to locate your own satellite we have to find out the orbital elements so thank you very much this is all about this video today